Hey, it's Jess uh, with Jess of the North. I am going to run you through the start of the season for how the pantry sits. Because the garden beds are put away for the season, what I have up here is pretty much what we're going to have for the winter season until I start with the summer season again next year. So for my household of two, this is what we have available. And this is the downstairs pantry. Uh, so it's a little less convenient to access. It's where the bulk of items live. And bulk is a good term for that. Uh, upstairs is the things that we use more frequently. Um, it's things that are jars of the same things that are already open. And these are just the next to pull. But because my household is only two people, uh, I've seen a lot of beautiful pantry tours. Uh, and mine is, mine's functional we're going to go with that. And I'm only feeding two people. And I think that it's a realistic expectation of somebody that is not beginning, but making forward steps on stocking their pantry, uh, including things that we didn't always use to eat. Uh, I have a lot of winter squashes down here. Those are new in quantity this year. Last year, I grew a couple of those. We learned how to cook with them. This season, I grew a bunch more of them so that we would have food stored over the winter that was still garden fresh that we could use. Uh, so I'm going to take you through what we have. I will probably talk a little bit about how we use it uh, and the types of things you should be looking for if you are sorting and organizing and cleaning your own pantry. In preparation for this video, uh, I cleaned all the shelves, cleaned the jars, uh, and sorted what I had. One of the things that I was looking for when I did that wasn't just how dusty are these or how many of these we have, uh, but I was also checking the seals. So it's, you want your canning jars to not have any movement in this top lid. So as I was going through, I found that this one had movement in that top seal. So I set him aside. I didn't bother cleaning him. I'm going to empty him out and recycle his jar. Uh, but because this top was able to be depressed again by pushing on it, it meant that the seal was no longer good. That's not worth the health of us eating tomatillo salsa that could have gone wrong. So I only had one jar where the seal was compromised. Uh, and it's, it's not something we eat super often, so it's fine. It's not a huge loss. A little disappointing, but... Uh, I still have, I have plenty of tomatillo salsa. It's these buddies right here. So all is not lost, but very important for you to check when you're sorting through your stored items, particularly if you canned them um, or someone canned them for you or however you have that going. That's also why I do not have any of my jars stacked on top of each other. If I stack the jars on top of each other, that could give me a false sense of the seal being intact. So when I was putting this together and organizing it, I put all of my lighter items up near the top. So I've got all of my dried goods up here. Uh, and then some of them you can see were store-bought. When we initially started stocking our pantry, uh, it's because of things like we have blizzards. Um, occasionally you can't get to the store. Sometimes you just don't have time, or maybe your grocery budget is more tight this month, or what, whatever the reason is. So some of our items are not things that we made. Some of them are things that we purchased. And some of them are things we purchased, uh, like this portion of the shelf down here, that's sort of convenient. So like I don't I don't grow garbanzo beans yet. Um, I don't have a good source for tuna. We don't eat tuna super often. It's canned. It'll just live here. Um, and I think I kind of forgot about the store-bought canned tomatoes uh, because we just reach for the garden tomatoes before anything else. Top shelf. So the herbs up top. I just organized these in a way that made sense to me. And that meant um, I did all of the like green herbs 
up here for the most part uh, because once you get to chai blossoms those are obviously not green um, but there are things like basil i've got mixed basil i've got three jars this size i've got oregano i've got i've got oregano in the greenhouse as well alive so i'm feeling pretty good about my oregano stash these are my onion greens I've got three jars of that uh, I only have one jar of dried dill, same with the dried fennel, and then um, same with dried cilantro. We don't use those often, uh, but when we do use them, I don't need large quantities of them to provide flavor for the dish. So having one quart jar of each of those is perfectly acceptable. Uh, then I have dried sage. You'll notice some of these are in Ziploc bags. The only reason is because it's the type of storage container I had on hand at the time. So the oregano and the sage, both dry, both fine. Um, and I don't use them super frequently. At some point I might move them to a jar, but I tend to prioritize jars for things that need to be canned. So either in the pressure canner or in the water bath canner. Uh, this parsley is store-bought. I've got two jars of chives, and then I have a gallon bag of chives, and then I have several alive chives in the, in the greenhouse. I might need to uproot some of my chives outside. And all of those in my brain make sense to go together on the stop shelf. The rest of my dried seasonings are different. So I have firecracker hot peppers. These are, these are pretty spicy. I can usually flavor a whole dish of sauce. So like a spaghetti pot size with like three of those ground up. Uh, and it creates a nice spice that builds and just holds steady. Those have been really satisfying. I have two jars down here unopened. And I have at least one upstairs in the kitchen that we use routinely. These are my Thai chilies. I've got another like large jar up there. So we'll use, we'll use the smaller jar, smaller in quantity. First, there is another one up in the kitchen uh, that we are currently using as needed. These are extra cherry tomatoes and I cut them in halves and I dehydrated them so they're like sun-dried tomatoes basically except in the dehydrator because that was more convenient. Uh, this is something that's really nice to pop into a dish for like an extra tomato flavor. Uh, it's really light, stores really easily, uh, very convenient for adding tomato flavor without like a full-on tomato. It's just the dehydrated cherry tomatoes. Then the other dried good up on the top shelf is the popcorn from this year. Um, I have two containers up in the kitchen for popcorn as well, one of which is from last year, 2022, and then another one that is from 2023. Uh, these are whole tomatoes. Some of these are from last year because I grew this uh, pineapple variety, the yellow one, last year. But I have these in order um, so that we grab them. The ones that I stored first are the ones that we're pulling out first. So they're coming in order, which means that I don't run the risk of having a jar that just doesn't get cycled through, uh, which means that your food can go to waste. Um, it does have a life expectancy in your jar. It will eventually not be good. So it's important to try to use them. So these are all of the tomatoes that I have left to be using until we grow more tomatoes next year. Um, usually when we make a dish, it'll take at least two of these jars. The last time I cooked, I actually tried using the ones that I had stored in the freezer that I'd intended to can. That turned out pretty well. The sauce was a little more watery, which made sense, but fine. Not a deal breaker for me. And then I've got a bunch of pickled things, and then otherwise processed things in the case of this apple butter. But 
Uh, so I grew Armenian cucumbers a couple years ago. I got a lot of those. Uh, I could have fed probably my entire neighborhood more cucumber than they wanted ever. So I made a lot of pickles. Uh, I've also got whole pickles. I use whole pickles less often, which is why there's only so many jars of those. The pickle spears I tend to put in beer. That is a, I think it's a Midwest thing, honestly. I don't think everybody does that. Uh, but I like a little snack in my beer. It's good. So this past year when I grew cucumbers, all of those were for fresh eating. Because we're good. <laughs> we're, we're very good on pickles. I have 18 jars of, of pickles. That's enough pickles. Continuing the pickle trend, I also have dill, um, dill relish specifically. I am not a huge fan of sweet relish. Um, I'll eat bread and butter pickles and bread and butter relish. Um, I'll put a little bit of like one of those firecracker peppers. I'll put those in the pickle spears. Um, I don't really want it in my relish. That's not how I use it. But similarly, we're good on relish for quite some time. Uh, all the relish in our fridge. That we've been using as we need it has been this. Uh, so honestly, I am only intending to grow cucumbers for fresh eating the next probably two, maybe three years. We'll see. Uh, that or I need to host a party and find a, a good use for these items, um, which means I need, need more friends that live close by. That would be helpful. Next, I have pickled beets. I really enjoy pickled beets. I think the most convenient use for these, for me, has been to throw them in ramen as like a nice little bright flavor. Um, you could also toss them in salads. If you've got a good use for pickled beets beyond those two things, let me know. Uh, those are the ones that I default to. It's been enough. Uh, any other beets that I grow, I tend to just roast or boil, something like that. Next I have pickled carrots. Uh, these I just water bath canned. They are in a brine similar to the pickles. I was gonna say it's not a specific dill flavor, but I can plainly see that there's dill in the jar, so I'm, I'm wrong about that. Pickled carrots for me were an experiment so that I had another way to enjoy the crop. There are any number of vegetables that I will only eat so much of raw. Um, and I do enjoy carrots. I enjoy cooking them. Um, but I grew a lot more than I could eat in the normal ways that I would eat it. So pickling them was a nice way to preserve the harvest and try something new. Uh, and it was delightful to find out that I do like the flavor. So that was good. That's my hot tip, by the way, is you try something that you're growing more than one cooking way or preserving way to see which is your favorite or gives you multiple ways to enjoy that particular item. Next I have my two types of salsa. Uh, I have tomatillo salsa and I have just regular like slightly zesty salsa. Um, I don't need it super spicy and if my spouse wants it super spicy then we've got dried hot peppers that he can add to the salsa uh, to increase that spice level. So these are things that I tend to take out during like friend get togethers. We'll get tortilla chips. You'll have your two salsa options. Um, sometimes we'll pick up queso. It's a nice little party appetizer sort of experience. Uh, but I only need to make it every two or three years. So it's, it's one of those ways that you can maximize your garden space in the years that you're not needing to grow things that you consider staple items. The other thing I have on the shelf is apple butter. A couple of years ago, I had a friend who had an apple tree on her land. She couldn't process them all. Uh, and she's like, hey, would you like some apples? And I was like, the answer to that question is always yes. Thank you. Uh, so I came over and I harvested apples. Um, I made a whole bunch of things. I made apple pie filling. I made apple butter. Uh, I made apple juice that I tried turning into wine. And I didn't like how that turned out. I think I didn't add enough 
seasonings to give that the flavor profile I wanted it to have. So that was a lesson learned, but I didn't have another use for the apple juice. So I wasn't really out anything. Um, I ate all the apple pie filling in a pie, not just like with a spoon, just to clarify. And that was delicious. Uh, it was a really nice way to customize the amount of sugar you're putting in your recipe. I don't need my pie to be like stupid sweet. I just want it to be flavorful. Um, so we really enjoyed that apple pie filling. It was very nice. Apple butter is probably my favorite thing to put on toast, particularly cinnamon raisin toast. Uh, so if you haven't tried that, recommend it. So I'm just rationing <laughs> using my apple butter. Uh, I do need to either find another source for apple or I need to locate one of those like you pick farms closest to me and then learn when the harvest time is because fall is all I know and fall is pretty broad or it's really swift. Uh, it's, it's hard. Weather's weird. So that is the canned goods that I've made. Then we go back to dry storage, uh, but we're talking about like squashes, gourds, um, onions, garlic, things like that. These are all the spaghetti squashes that I got this year. Uh, they will live here. I'll harvest them as I need them. So far, I'm the only person in the house that likes spaghetti squash. So these are all for me. Uh, and then I have onions, uh, followed by garlic. All of these are this year's crops because this is what's left over from last year. I did already plant garlic for the following season, uh, and I'm probably going to keep doing that where I plant it in front of the greenhouse um, and maybe a few other spots so that I get a just a continuous harvest. We also have a bunch of garlic that uh, if it starts to not work in this container the way I have it stored, then I will just dice it up, dehydrate it, and I can use them in cooking that way as well because these will keep for quite a while. They'll be fine. Down here I have my Long Island cheese pumpkins. Uh, I've got one that Oak decided that I needed to cook, so uh, that is upstairs because he cracked its shell, um, so I'll be cooking that. I've got a whole container of autumn frost here. I got these little collapsible storage bins at Joann's. Uh, really handy. I really like those. Um, I especially like that they've got this nifty little feature where I can label them. These autumn frost have been, I think, the thing that when I gift them to people, because I, I had quite a few of these, um, they're like, what is that? It's beautiful. And it is beautiful, uh, but it's also going to be delicious. So I have several of these. Um, I can probably have one of these as a meal for my spouse and I, and uh, we would probably still have some leftovers that he could take to lunch the next day. Unconventional thing from the garden. Uh, maybe it's more conventional than I think it is, but people are always a little surprised that I do that. Uh, I make country wines. So I've got a rhubarb mint in the back, and then I've got one of each of my very first varieties that I'd made. So I made a grape wine. I didn't like how that turned out, but it, it was my first one, so I've kept it. Sometimes things mature in a way where they taste better than they did initially. And then I've got a dandelion wine in that second bottle. I enjoy the process of making different types of wines from things on hand, uh, and I enjoy reading, so it's something that I enjoy sipping my little thing of country wine while I'm reading in the evenings. It's, it's very nice. Another way to use a harvest that you might not consider. Um, it's also one of those things that you can do with things that are slightly damaged. So if I've got a bunch of fruit that's damaged, I can still turn it into wine. Uh, not necessarily like riddled with pest damage, but um, like in visual imperfections. So the last squash I have on the storage shelf down here is, these are the violin rugosas. I've got quite a few of those. I haven't had a chance to cook them 
yet to see how good their flavor is, but I am very much looking forward to that. You can see that the ones on the top are a little bit lighter color. Those were the very last ones that I pulled off of the vines as it was getting frosty out, so they didn't necessarily cure in the sun for the same length of time. So they're the ones I'm going to want to use first. And then my last storage squash is these pink bananas. So I've been trying to grow the pink bananas for three or four years. It's been a while. Uh, persistence paid off. Uh, being more stubborn than vegetables is very important. And I have two beautiful pink banana squashes. These are considered a pumpkin substitute, at least according to their seed packet. So what I'm going to be doing is when I cook these, I'm going to be saving the seeds from the insides. That is exactly as easy as it sounds. You are going to scoop out the seeds. Um, if you've ever done pumpkin carving, it's exactly like that. You're going to rinse off your seeds of any of that little membrane that's attached to them, and you're going to lay them flat to dry, label them with what they are. Uh, you would like to think you remember, but just label them. Okay. And then I will be able to continue trying to grow the pink banana squash. The potential danger is that it could have cross pollinated because I did not take any precautions to ensure that it would breed true to type. So you can get those cute little netted gift bags with the neat little ribbon around the top that you can just like drawstring it closed. Uh, and a fine enough mesh bag means that nothing's going to pollinate it except you. So you can ensure that only the pink banana squash flowers pollinate the pink banana squash flowers. Um, I did make an effort to pollinate the pink banana squashes just because I really wanted pink banana squash. So I feel pretty confident these will be fine. There's always a risk because I didn't use the mesh bag. The other just like staple thing to have in your pantry um, with or without your like carb of vegetable you can also have, store things like rice, uh, flour is on that bottom one. So we just buy the biggest bag available for both of those items. And then I store them in these buckets. The buckets have lids that lock closed. So very good at pest proofing um, because they're also in a bag inside of it. Freshness is going pretty well. I still need to thresh my amaranth, uh, which means that you are basically like tossing it up or blow it, but dumping it into another container through a stream of air to let the outside husk blow away so that you're left with just the grain. Um, I need to thresh the amaranth and I will store it exactly the same way and label its bucket. So that is the downstairs pantry. This is where we come to grab either the bulkier items or we store the things that just would take up a whole lot of space that we don't need to use in the kitchen immediately. So when you think of pantry, you might not necessarily consider your kitchen to be one of those items. I do, uh, particularly this section of my kitchen, because I have a lot of like dishware stored on this side of the kitchen, but this side tends to be the items that we pull down to use as we cook. This is where we have things that are actively open being used. Uh, we only open these long enough to pull the ingredients that we're going to use out and cook with them. I have a couple of whole tomato jars up here just for ease of use. Same thing with, I have one container of dried cherry tomatoes, um, a bunch of different types of peppers, a bunch of different herbs, some dried mushrooms, uh, and then I've got dried onion bulbs, as well as dried beets. I've got some dried turnips. Uh, all the sauces that we use um, are popping corns. So this is from 2022. This was grown this year, 2023. All of our baking items with the things we use less frequently being up at the top. I also have conventional spices. Uh, and by conventional, I mean purchased at the grocery store. Uh, it is, even with the amount of guardian space that I have, 
it is a massive task to try to grow absolutely every herb that I would need. Uh, and some things I can't, uh, like vanilla. If I wanted vanilla beans, that's not happening. Um, I could grow it like inside, like the house, but I don't have a system set up for that. Uh, it is still more convenient uh, to go to the store for some things. Some seasonings are things that we mixed up ourselves. So like this is a taco rub. It is not uh, something that we purchased at the store. It was something that my spouse put together. And then I've got cinnamon and toast mixture. So it's cinnamon with raw sugar. Um, but the important thing is that I have these items labeled so I know what they are. And some of them, like I opened the umami to pour it into this container. Uh, it's labeled as hot umami, which I assume is mushroom and hot peppers ground together. And just the, the dust particles made me cough and sneeze. Uh, so having them labeled so you know what you're getting into is very important. And then I did a similar thing where noodles, we buy more than one box at a time. Um, they're up in order of convenience as far as if I use them more often, they're on the shelf. If we use them less often, they go up there. Um, and then just general store items that we use. I touched on this a little bit earlier and I want to elaborate. I grow different types of hot peppers and I do that because they have different flavor profiles as well as different spice ratings which or Scoville units. Uh, so I've got dried serranos, I've got dried lemon drop peppers, uh, and then I even have some dried sweet peppers. That was more of an experiment. Um, that is not something I think we'll be doing again because we haven't used it a whole bunch. <sighs> By growing a couple different varieties each year, I'm able to have specific jars to pull from for the type of food we're trying to make at that time. So this is primarily what we pull from as needed routinely. I think of this as my working pantry. The basement shelving I very much think of as like the grocery store. Uh, when we have run out of it up here, I grab it from down there. Uh, the things that are like stored veggies store better in the basement where it's cooler and darker than they would up in the kitchen or in a spare room. So this is my working setup for a family of two, uh, for what we like to grow uh, and for how we want to eat. This is not necessarily what I see when I search somebody's pantry. Uh, I see these very beautiful magazine worthy experiences. And my hope in sharing this vlog with you is that you can understand that if you don't have the space or the capacity on your workload for everything you have going on in your life and you want to grow a garden and you want to have things that you are eating fresh from your space as close to home as possible, you know what all went into it and it's something that you like to cook with, that you can understand that you can have a setup that is functional. It works. Uh, I don't need to have a dedicated space as like a closet labeled pantry to use this. I hope that you can see this as an option, see the beautiful magazine worthy photos that you can see when you search pantry or pantry tour uh, and know that what it looks like for you is more important than what you find in search listings. A practical approach to using what you're trying to grow is really important, particularly if you're starting out. Uh, when I was learning how to do this, we had way less going on. It's been as I learn how to grow things more efficiently that I'll grow a year of just serranos and I will have several jars of dried serranos. Uh, and then when we get close to the end, I'll plan on growing more serranos the next season. Same thing with tomatoes. I grow tomatoes every year but I grow more tomato plants when I need to stockpile the amount of canned whole tomatoes that we use. Because we also cook differently than some people, we choose to use whole tomatoes in our sauces as opposed to canning sauces pre-made. A lot of families prefer to make their sauces ahead of time and can the sauce as a whole unit. 
the beauty of growing your own things and storing them is to see what you like to use the most and then you have that on hand so that you eat in a way that you enjoy and you feel good about. So I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for coming along with me on my pantry tour for my family of two in what I think of as a really practical approach to gardening and using your garden. I'm upset you don't. Oh, regrets. <laughs>